Hello, welcome back to Learn Economia. Today we are going to discuss a concept called predatory pricing. So we will discuss more aspects related to predatory pricing here. Let's proceed into the session. In the very beginning, it's very, very important to see the meaning of predatory pricing. So what is predatory pricing? This is a common strategy that is used in business. So when we say this is a common strategy that is used in business, what is it all about? This is an anti-competitive strategy. So what do you mean by anti-competitive strategy? It tries to eliminate what is called competition. So tries to eliminate competition means competition between the firms that exist in the economy would be eliminated. If you look at the present scenario, we could find that there is some form of imperfect competition that we will be having, isn't it? So sometimes it would be a monopolistic competition, sometimes it would be an oligopoly and so on. So what happens is that the firm that goes for predatory pricing is called as the predatory firms. So there would be a firm called predatory firm which will be doing predatory pricing. Now I will tell what does it mean by a predatory firm and what does it mean by a predatory pricing. Just assume that there are four firms in the economy. So there are four firms in the economy and these four firms are producing substitute goods. Substitutes. Okay, so these four firms are firm A, firm B, firm C and firm D. Firm A, firm B, firm C and firm D are producing some goods which are substitutes to each other. Okay. Now, out of these four firms, one firm, let's select, it is D. What firm D will be doing is that, firm D will do something in its pricing behavior. So, firm D will be changing its pricing behavior. So what will firm D do here? Firm D will be setting the prices of its products at a low level. So that is firm D would be reducing the prices of its commodity. Now what happens? I told you that all the four firms are producing substitute commodities. Now the price of the product that is produced by firm D is coming down. So firm D is now cheaper in the market. Not firm D, firm D's product. Isn't it? Firm, D, firm D's product would be now cheaper in the market. Now let's compare the scenario with the price of the other firms. Again we are talking about consumers who are rational who would try to get commodity at a cheaper prices. Because when com people get commodities at cheaper price, their welfare would be increased. Isn't it? So, these people now would compare the price of firm D's product with the prices of the products of other firms. Now, consumers could find that the other firm's prices, other firm's products prices are having no change but Firm D's product is actually offered at a very low price. Now what happens is that all the consumers will rush to purchase the product of Firm D. So automatically this fall in price will increase demand. Of what? Demand of Firm D's product. Firm D's product. So it will have some other implication as well. What will happen to the demand of the other firm's product? The demand of demand for other firm's product will be coming down, isn't it? Now firm D will be able to capture more of market share. So firm D will capture most of the market, most of the market. Sometimes all market would be in the hands of D. So what will happen 
all the other firms a b and c if they are not able to sell their product and all the consumers are coming to firm d to get the product of firm d now in that scenario firm d will be establishing its monopoly control in the market isn't it because firm d could now drive away all the competitors who are all the competitors a b and c so all the competitors are now driven away by the price reduction behavior of firm d so this price reduction behavior of firm d to eliminate competition this is the main idea of predatory pricing so predatory firm uh, in our example firm d will definitely raise the price of the commodity once it understand that competition is completely eliminated so once firm d and understands and identifies that a b and c are not there in the market sometimes a b and c would be exiting the market because of the losses they are having because not they are not having any market share with them and they will be exiting the market and in that case again firm d will be having the complete market share and when firm d understands that he is a monopoly he will be increasing the prices of his good because he wanted to recover from some losses that he had made earlier okay so this is a basic understanding with respect to predatory pricing let's deal more about it how does it work how does predatory pricing work let's see how it happens i told you that there would be a firm which is firm d and what is firm d is doing firm d is actually reducing the prices of its commodity why to eliminate competition isn't it eliminate competition so this is our basic idea and once the competition is eliminated the price will be increased so here the intention of firm d is to eliminate competition and to establish a monopoly position isn't it so what happens here is that i told you firm d will be reducing the price of its commodity to what extent and how this will be done by selling the commodity at a price selling at a price that is below the cost of production below production cost okay so definitely in this instance the firm d will be making losses but the, that is not a concern of firm d right now because the intention here is to establish a monopoly power isn't it it uh, needs to eliminate all the competition it wants to eliminate all the rivals isn't it so firm d will be keeping this losses in its mind and it will not be reflecting that uh, in the prices right now but what it will be doing is that when it see that it is having a monopoly position it will increase the price because it needs to recover from the losses isn't it it wants to recover from the losses it had made when it was selling some products at a price which was below the production cost so this is the entire mechanism of predatory pricing now let me take you to the types of predatory pricing predatory pricing would be of various types one it could be geographic predatory pricing so what does it mean by geographic predatory pricing so you consider a particular area a specific area specific area okay or a specific region so the predatory pricing system will be happening only in that region for example a firm will be focusing on a particular region and it will be reducing the price of the product at that particular region only so the firm the predatory firm would like to have the impact of its price reduction in a particular area because in that particular area firm the predatory firm needs to eliminate all the local competitors that is the main intention okay now coming to the next type of predatory pricing which is called product line predatory pricing so 
So in this specific scenario, what happens is that just assume that a firm is producing different commodity. For example, there is a firm called firm X. So this is doing some predictory behavior with respect to pricing. So how can firm X do the same when it follows the product line method? So product line predictory pricing system involves firm X to produce multiple commodities. Let it be like firm X produce good A, good M. Okay, good M, good F and good Z. So these are certain commodities that are produced by firm X. For example, this is soap, this is uh, talcum powder and this is toothpaste. Toothpaste, okay. So there have been three commodities produced by firm X. Now what will firm X do? The intention of firm X here is to focus on good F, that is soap. So what firm X would be doing in this context is that it will be reducing the price of soap. It will be reducing the price of soap. And it will be selling the soap at a price which is below the production cost. Okay. And it will be eliminating the rivals. And once it feels that for rivals are eliminated, it will be increasing the prices and so on. But whenever all these are done by firm X, what will happen to the prices of other products? The prices of other products will remain as it is. So prices of other products will not be changing. Other products will have no change. Okay, so product line is you just you just focus on one product and make a, make a fall in the prices on that product only will not affect the prices of other product. Now we are moving on to the next type of predictory pricing called the price discrimination. So what does it mean by this? So this is something that is very very uh, very much possible in a monopolistic monopolistic market structure. So in a monopolistic market structure, a monopolist would do this price discrimination. So he will be selling the same commodity at different prices to different consumer. The monopolist would be the single seller in the market, right? So price discrimination is not uh, that common in uh, monopolistic competition. But this would be prevalent in monopolist market structure because we are talking about one single seller where there is no substitute available. So what happens is that this can price discrimination can be first degree or second degree or third degree and it will be weakening the competitors in some specific market in certain cases. So this would also be some other type of predatory pricing. Now let's see what is the impact of predatory pricing. Predatory pricing would be impacting several categories, especially consumers, because the monopolizing scenario will be creating harm on who? Consumers. The consumers would be the culprit. Sorry, the consumers will be the victim here. Isn't it? The monopoly the seller will be the culprit and the uh, consumers would be the victim here. And also, when this predictory pricing happens, what will happen to the market? Can the market function effectively? Actually, no. There would be some market distortions happening. So, this will lead to inefficiency. Inefficiency. So, what will happen to fair competition? There will be less chance for fair competition. Innovation will be having a tendency to come down and consumers would be having limited choice. Why? We are talking about monopoly with no substitutes, right? And now what can happen to a firm who is or which is uh, trying to enter the market? Definitely a new firm cannot enter the market in this context. Because the monopolist firm have already set some barriers for a new firm to enter. Because now the monopolist 
or the already existing farm which is the predatory farm now it has become more dominant to establish a dominant power in the market and for the same reason it won't be allowing anybody else to enter so what will happen to the economic welfare then definitely since we are moving away from efficiency and we are moving closer to inefficiency it will be reducing economic welfare of the consumers so that is again uh, some impact related to predatory price now what are the problems in proving the predatory price definitely there exist several issues i told you that as far as predatory pricing is concerned the seller would be selling or the predatory firm sells the good sells the good below production cost isn't it below production cost now in certain cases in this estimation of production cost won't be that easy so you might be estimating it but when it comes to the actual calculation and computation of the actual cost it might be difficult because you might be sometimes leaving some uh, cost you might not might be sometimes uh, going for some overestimation or underestimation so uh, all these will be leading to consequences so difficulty in determining the true cost so true cost if you do not know definitely it will be affecting the your predictive pricing behavior the firm will go for some uh, false notion and it will be going to set the predatory price based on that and it will be affecting its profit as well and also you could find that as far as this predatory pricing behavior is concerned the firm in the initial period will be having some losses the short term loss if you remember again if you if you uh, if i take you to the old example of firm b what firm b was doing that is that firm d was actually reducing the price of its product in the very beginning to eliminate the rivals isn't it so in that sense in that scenario it was creating some losses but later it could recover from those losses and uh, make some profit scenario but uh, whatever and even it is for a short term losses would be there so that is a problem and also what happens is that we have to consider the real world scenario and we have to see the role of government is the government supporting monopoly no right the government knows it very well that if monopoly exists the consumers choice will be reducing consumers options will be reducing because there is no possibility to make a choice uh, by choosing from the options so government never promote monopoly government discourage monopoly so what will happen from a, a kind of uh, non monopolistic scenario if an economy is moving to monopoly the government will not let it happen so what the government will do is that the government also would put some barriers in front of the uh, predatory pricing firm or predatory firm to uh, engaging uh, to stay away from so they will, the government never want this predatory firm to engage in predatory pricing strategy so what the government will be doing is that the government will be trying all the means to prevent these firm from entering into such strategies so there will be some legal implications so if such firm or if any firms engage into predatory pricing behavior the government will be imposing some penalties so there will be some huge fines imposed by the government okay now but the predatory firms are very much uh, cunning they will know what to do so they might be trying to find some excuses to stay away from the penalties what all it can be so they will be using some defense mechanism against the predatory pricing accusations so what all could be there they will say definitely we are actually selling at a low price we agree we agree that we are selling it as a at a low price but why we are selling at a low price because our cost of production is low we are not incurring too much of expenses so if our cost of production is low 
uh, we feel that uh, customer is the king and the customer satisfaction is our satisfaction so we are trying to reflect this co low cost of production in prices so that is why we are selling at low prices and we do not have any loss so even though these predatory firm actually has got some loss they will not be um, actually telling this in public they will be hiding this loss from the public and they pretend that they are not having any losses because their cost of production itself is low so that is one defense mechanism that uh, these predatory firm can use and the second uh, kind of argument that they can tell here is that or second kind of stand that they can use it here is that they might say that okay we are selling at a low price because we wanted to maintain our market share so earlier we were maintaining some market share uh, in the previous year we, we were achieving some market share but we have to maintain the same today to maintain the same today in reduction of prices is very important that is another kind of alternative uh, defense mechanism they the predatory firm can use then they might also say like this who told you that we are engaging in some predatory strategy actually we are not engaging in predatory strategy what we are doing is only price wars so uh, firm b will say i am reducing the price so why can't other firms also reduce the price so let it be some price war i am taking my stand so who is you to complain who are you to complain against me so like that also the predatory firm can say to defend itself okay now here comes the role of some antitrust authorities so what is uh, this kind, particular kind of authority doing these authority will be actually making them investigations uh, regarding the predatory pricing instances and they will be taking certain mechanisms or methods to prevent the predatory pricing mechanism so what they do is that they would be collecting data they would be trying to make go for some analysis but unfortunately when it comes to implementation of law there exists a failure so implementation becomes a failure in most of the instances though we do have some antitrust authority to deal with a predatory pricing mechanism okay <clears throat> now how can you connect india with predatory pricing system uh, where we have had some got some kind of predatory pricing instances here actually yes so india had witnessed some predatory pricing behavior by some firms especially this happened in the industry of e-commerce and telecom so these industries had witnessed some predatory pricing uh, kind of experiences so what india has done is that india has gone for an act called competition act and this act was uh, something which came in 2002 and as per this act no firm can abuse its dominant position so what does it mean by abuse abuse means if at all it engages in something called predatory pricing behavior it is identified as a misuse of the dominant position of a firm so this is what has been understood uh, as far as india's predatory pricing experience is concerned so that is it all about today uh, the concept of predatory pricing now you can download learn economy app uh, to get previous year question papers and answers free study materials live and recorded classes and free mcq based weekly tests so i'll be providing the link of the same in the description box again you can join our free telegram community for which i'll be giving the link in the description box you can like share and subscribe to our channel for more such content that's it thank you for watching